Hi folks, I'm Sean and this is Pens at All. Welcome! Here at Pens and All we do pen reviews, ink reviews, as well as paper reviews and have some fun with all sorts of things that have to do with fine writing. Today's video is a review of the Noodler's Triple Tail Flex fountain pen. A couple of things to note about Noodler's as a company. They were created in 2004 by Nathan Tardif and the ink company as he created it was created so that anybody who wanted to have access to quality inks for fountain pen use could have quality inks for fountain pen use at an affordable price. If you look at the About section of Noodler's website, you'll see an explanation of where the name comes from. The name comes from an activity predominantly in the American South but elsewhere in the United States called noodling. Now, noodling is kind of like fishing but you don't use any tools. The idea of hand fishing, so to speak, equalizes the struggle between man and animal. Now this idea of equalizing the struggle is something that Nathan takes to heart with his company. That's why he wants to create good quality fountain pen inks as well as fountain pens at an affordable price. It levels the playing field so that anybody who wants to use a fountain pen can use a fountain pen. So, now, let's look at the Noodler's Triple Tail Flex. As you can see, it is a demonstrator pen. It is in a cigar shape. It's made of a lightweight, clear material. The cap twists off and posts, although it makes for a very long pen when it's posted. There is a metal clip, round finial, and a metal band. The filling mechanism is a piston filling mechanism, and it's a piston mechanism unlike others that I've encountered. Instead of twisting to extend and retract the piston, it's just a push and pull mechanism. Push and pull. Sometimes it can feel like it's getting stuck, and so there are times when I've felt like I was going to push too hard and make the ink uh, fly off the table, but not a big deal. This mechanism can be converted to a cartridge that Noodlers provides. It's called their 308 cartridge. It can also be relatively easily converted to an eyedropper filling, in which case you would get a ton of ink. Now, this pen requires a ton of ink because it lays down a ton of ink, and we'll see that in the writing sample. One of the things to note about this particular pen is the nib, and I'll show a close-up of this, but the nib is made from three tines rather than two, hence triple tail. Most flex nibs, most nibs at all, are made with just two tines. This pen is made with three tines, giving for a lot more flex and a lot more ink being laid down on the page. Let's look at the writing samples. You will see that there are two kinds of writing samples that I like to provide. The first is going to be your typical um, name of the pen, the kind of ink, quick brown fox and all of that, showing the, the basic writing of the pen. But then I like to provide a little bit longer of a writing sample to give you an idea of what it looks like, how it feels to actually write with the pen. So let's get to it. So here we have the Noodler's Triple Tail. a flex nib. We are using diamine Oxford blue. I love this blue. You get a lot of shading. Uh, it's dark when it's really dark. It's nice and saturated and it's just a gorgeous blue. So our cliche As you can see, it's a very wet ink flow on this Noodler's Flex. Um, the downstrokes, super wet. Upstrokes, not so much. 
but it's a very wet pen. But you get wonderful, wonderful line variation. very wet pen. So what do I like about the Noodler's Triple Tail Flex? First and foremost, I love its affordability. You get a lot of pen for not a lot of money. When I was looking to get a new fountain pen, when I first started getting back into the hobby after many years of being away, I wanted something affordable because I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy it like I did before. And this was just what I needed. It's affordable and it's a good pen. Other things that I like about it, it's a demonstrator, and I just love demonstrator pens. I, I love the ability to see what's going on inside the pen. For this pen especially, the fact that you can see the ink level getting lower and lower is really good because it does lay down so much ink, you want to make sure that you don't run out of ink. The large size is perfect for me. The pen feels very good in the hand the distance between my fingers is almost perfect for me anyway so I really like that it feels good in the hand I really like the line variation as well the pen flexes enough to really create a lot of line variation and create a distinct handwriting it gives individuality to what you're writing and again this is something that Nathan really wanted to create with his pens the ability to create individual handwriting, to individualize, to, to make your handwriting unique. And this pen does it. If you like shimmering or shining inks, this pen is going to be really good for you. It puts down so much, so much ink that that glitter and that shimmer and that sheen is really going to be present in the final product, especially if you use a good quality paper. Another thing that I really love about this pen is how smooth it writes. It, that's probably because of how wet it writes, but also it's because of the way it's made. It just glides across the page and you get a little bit of feedback and a little bit of singing of the pen on the page and that creates almost a perfect writing experience. I can see the ink going down, I can see the letters being produced, I can feel the pen in my hand, and I can hear it going across the page. All of those things 
come together to make a really nice pen. Okay, so what are some areas of growth for the triple tail flex? Some of this is going to be personal, but that's the way it is with these sort of things, isn't it? One of the things that I don't like about this particular pen is just how wet it writes out of the box. In order to um, make it a little bit drier, you'd have to do some tuning to it. And I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not an expert at that sort of thing. And I like my pens to work right out of the box the way I like them. That doesn't mean to say that it's bad. It's just something to keep in mind is that this is a very wet pen. Because it's wet, it goes through ink very, very quickly. And as that ink level nears the bottom, it can start to lose surface tension and then the ink is going to seep or leak or bloop out of the nib. Again, something to keep in mind, but thanks to the demonstrator style, you'll always know when you're close and then you can refill with ink. If you're somebody who needs to write very, very small, this is not the pen for you. Yes, you get wonderful line variation, but even the thinnest lines are going to be relatively thick with the amount of ink that this nib puts down. Connected with that is if you're using cheap paper, this is not going to be a good pen for you. If you have to write on like the paper that's at work, you're probably not going to want to use this particular pen. Even my Rhodia, which is an 80 gram per square meter paper, this pen can have a little bit of bleed through because it puts down so much ink on it. One option would be to use reverse writing in those instances, but even still, the reverse writing on this pen is super scratchy. It's not an enjoyable experience, and you run the risk of scraping up paper fibers into your nib. Another personal thing is the weight. I'm not a fan of how light this particular pen is, given its size. I weighed the pen, and it's 21 grams. That's the lightest pen that I have. It capped, it's 21 grams. Um, that's the lightest pen that I have in my particular collection. Again, my collection is not very big, but it's still extremely light. Um, compared to a couple of household items that I have, like a little red plush dragon and a, a plush subway rat, compared to the red plush dragon, it's about a quarter of the weight. So four of these would equal that small dragon. The subway rats, even worse, five of these. So this is one fifth of the size and weight of that particular plush subway rat. Now again, who's gonna have subway rats around the house? But it gives you an idea of just how light this pen is. If you like light pens, this is gonna be good for you. Again, as I said before, the size in your hand is really, really nice but it kind of tricks you at how light it is. So for that reason, I'm not a big fan of this pen for the lightness of it. So it's something to keep in mind when you're making a decision about whether or not to purchase this pen. Final thoughts on the Noodler's Triple Tail Flex. Overall, I like the pen. It's a smooth writer. It's a clear demonstrator pen, which I really, really enjoy. It feels good in the hand, and I feel like I can write all day with this pen, so that makes it great. At the same time, it's super affordable. It's definitely worth checking out. Yes, it is a little bit wet, it can be a little bit messy, and it's a little bit light, but it's definitely a pen worth checking out. If you want some more thoughts on the Triple Tail Flex, feel free to go over to my blog, Pens It All to see some more pictures as well as a little bit more of an extended explanation and thoughts on the pen. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below and uh, we'll see you later.